I can imagine a lot, but I don't care. Because what is the word to make it? The word to make it is I came here, I was a lucky man. I made my uh, first film in America and I got right away into the industry. But I had a background of uh, Werner Herzog, uh, Lars von Trier, Fassbinder, Wim Wenders. So I had a good background. And now I have to go back to my guests because in a few moments I will get an award. I don't say live achievement because it's a, a word I don't like. So that's it. Have a good time. And I think you should go with your camera, not asking me a question. You should go to Hollywood and discover it by yourself. You should go and see people. Uh, on uh, Hollywood Boulevard and see the action. Life in LA, it's strange. It's a very disillusioning place. Adventurous, I always get in trouble a lot, but it's pretty calm most of the time. I feel like it's a city that adopts people very quickly. You don't have to live here very long to be an adopted child of Los Angeles. I don't know, the kind of like the cool thing in LA is that like every time you leave your house, you have no idea what's gonna happen. It's a place that grows on you because you sort of make it, it becomes your own town. LA is like the life anywhere. It's what you make of it yourself. Your life is inside you, it's not in places. looking for some dream and you find what you need. You gotta be motivated and then you gotta be like, not, not give up, really. LA is not really a city like other great cities. It is not like New York or London or Paris. And cause it, it's not really like one big city, like it's not like New York. It's like all these little tiny towns connected by freeways and each town has its own completely unique character. Come over here to this beautiful place here in, in you know, Palos Day. You have the ocean view in front of you. It can't be better. It's, it's fantastic. It's like my secret, you know? It's always been a special city to myself. There's a line in one movie about how America got started. All the crackpots in Europe packed up and went to a frontier which became the 13 colonies. When some people couldn't fit in with that, they moved farther west, which is why all the nuts eventually ended up in California. The most popular city in Cali is Los Angeles, called LA. Everybody that came here, came here to make their dream. How many people come to LA every day to search for their dream? couple thousand? There are thousands, I'm sure, every day they come by all means, you know, they drive here, they come with bus. How many people? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, probably a lot. <laughs> I don't know a number. If you're asking me to give you an answer, I have no idea. I'll say 73. Minus one. They, uh, <clears throat> they come uh, with airplanes. And they have a dream to, to become famous. Yeah, mainly because of the film industry, like Hollywood and, you know. You have to brace LA, and you have to give LA 10 years. And if you give 10, if you give 10 years to LA, and you are passionate about something that you want to do, the city will pay you back, you know? A lot of people don't have the passion, it doesn't have the, the passion, or even, you know, doesn't want to give that time, you know? It's hard, you know? If I had to guess, I would say the number of people that move to LA on a regular basis, it's probably in the thousands, if, if not tens of thousands. No, I can't even tip it. Too many. Too many. A lot. <laughs> this many. That many. Yeah. Lots, and they're still coming every day. And the amazing thing is that the American dream is absolutely very alive and well. People come from absolutely nowhere 
and with talent and with ambition, uh, they succeed remarkably and it, it happens every day. Unfortunately, those dreams, you know, never come realized for, for, for many of them. But some of them, you know, probably make it. So this city can be extremely giving and extremely hard. So you have to be really focused on even what, are you, what are you looking for. There is a study that classified only 3% of people as successful. What's missing for most are goals. I don't know, maybe by a very small percentage. That many? Oh, I think probably one in 10,000, one in a million, you know. I mean, it's, you know, how many screenwriters want to be Quentin Tarantino and how many are Quentin Tarantino? Well, there's one. I want to say a couple people, if you, if you want the dream and you go after it and you can make it happen, you make it happen. And you have to be a hustler, you know, you can't slack on anything because there's going to be somebody else out there that's more hungry than you and more eager than you or more talented than you and uh, they'll swoop up your opportunity if you're not there to grab it. People always come here with a dream and it's, it's a big river and it's got um, currents that take you down and then currents that keep you up, keep you flowing forward. You just have to learn how to swim and navigate the, navigate the waters. And most of the people I knew that came out with us here, uh, you know, 20 years yeah. ago, are, have, uh, you know, most of them have, have left, you know, yes. gave up on L.A. My friend had on her Twitter that was something like, uh, if all of the people pursuing their dreams in Los Angeles left, there would be no more traffic on the freeways. <laughs> I'm uh, executive editor of, of Variety. Uh, it's a hundred and six-year-old, 107, eight-year-old newspaper, and we cover the entertainment business uh, globally. So my job is to stay on top of everything going on in entertainment all over the world. I, I think you have to have uh, a combination of uh, talent and, and, and practical common sense. You have to be psychologically healthy enough to have your, uh, your ability to, to deal with uh, the, the business side of it and the rejection and the compromise. You have to be grounded in a, in a way, but if you are extremely ambitious and extremely talented, the difference is you will succeed and then you'll go into rehabilitation. You'll go into a facility for mental health or drug addiction. So, you know, you don't have to be psychologically healthy to succeed, but you have to be psychologically healthy to survive. This is Don King, Hollywood and Holland, only in America. The classic lookalike of one of the icons of America, Mr. Don King. Only in America, Don King, baby. One sentence by the fake Don King, 15 bucks. Daily food budget, 15 bucks. Look, how can you not be impressed by the ocean? How can you not be impressed by the scenery, by the weather, by the climate? But uh, culturally, it's a very difficult uh, city to crack. Well, a lot of people say LA is a good place to make your dreams come true, but then it's kind of hard because there's a lot of competition over here. There's like a darker kind of side, but it's mixed in with this beautiful weather. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting place and all the amazing of like everything that happens, if that makes sense. I realized that like anything you want to create in LA and anytime you want to collaborate on something, there's always somebody who wants to create. It's a place that grows on you because you sort of make it, it becomes your own town. Like Paris, you, know, you have your version of Paris and someone else's version of Paris. LA is not like Paris, but it's a lot like um, your own custom made town. Los Angeles metropolitan area with 18 million people has almost 1,000 miles of highways and freeways. That's a lot. All the places where we used to have uh, public transport, we had something called the red line. Uh, we had um, uh, above ground trains to move people around Southern California. 
but uh, the business people didn't want there to be public transport. They wanted to make money on roads and cars and tires and engines, and they tore off all of the rail lines, and they made L.A. Uh, dependent upon automobiles. Yeah, no, L.A. Is, is like a multitude. It's a sprawl. It's not a city. It's not a metropolis. It's a sprawl. It goes out in every direction and just permeates with life. For every culture, there is, you know, a place here. That's really what, what makes it unique. I thought that the, the, the ghettos in L.A. were some of the worst places you could go. I thought that the upscale, statistic places of L.A. were some of the best places you can go. And then I went to South Africa and I found out that all that was false. That Cape Town has a lot better and that Soweto has a lot worse. There isn't any real L.A. It's, it's, a, it's a collection of, a collection of, collection of towns and cities as people. Yeah, I think L.A. is a very weird place. I love doing business here. I love the people who work here and how they do business. I think it's a very good environment for that. But, you know, you drive around and, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of a mess. There's no center. Uh, the air quality is extremely bad. So it's kind of an example of, of how things should not be built. So a lot of people, you know, hate the traffic in LA and commuting and stuff, but if you choose to not commute, you don't have to. I mean, I, I'm saying that, like, I'm very lucky to not have to, but if I got a job ever on the other side of town, I would move to the other side of town. Sure, yeah, I spend maybe hours a day driving around. But that's okay, though, because for me as a musician, so much of my time I spend in the car is listening to mixes, listening to original music and listening to the radio, and I'm getting so much inspiration just by being in the vehicle. I think it's funny, I make this music and I, I, I expect people to have the same ears as me, but I always know that people aren't listening always in the car like I am. My records are made for listening in a car. Uh, you can sit in a traffic jam just about anywhere in the world now. You know, you go to Sao Paulo, you, you see more people in traffic than here. But overall, traffic is okay. It's not great. brings like the most, I mean, terrible people. There are some terrible people in this city, <laughs> which when I first moved here, I didn't know anybody. And I ended up hanging out with some really good people, but some terrible people too. Um, but you, you meet a lot of, there's like really interesting people who've spent time exploring the entire world and then kind of ended up coming to LA because LA is like a place for drifters or a place for people who just want to create. And they don't know what they want to create. They want to make art. They want to live and it's it's so random and we can when you can like let go and just go with the flow of it and not expect it or try to make it be something it's not that's when you learn to really love it it's a big mix of, of people you know it's, it's very you can you can drop out in la you get a bit of nature and then you get just good food and culture and coffee and that's all at the same time I feel like people here don't feel limited by the specific route they choose. It's like, you know people that are involved in so many different aspects of the city and the creative, creative force that permeates here that you feel like anything's possible. And of course, when you feel like anything's possible, you make stuff that isn't, you, you kind of, you automatically aren't thinking impossible or possible. You're just thinking, what do I want to do? That kind of freedom is very infectious in the city. But it's an easy, lazy place to live. It's easy. We have space, 
It's one of our greatest commodities. We are very spread out, big, wide cities. LA is easy. A lot of dreams come true. Dreams are broken. Maybe some more than others. People come here for little reasons. People come here for small dreams. LA is easy. It was always like, go west. And it still is. One very simple element of Los Angeles, it's, it's again maybe a dichotomy of something that's bad and good at the same time, is that we have some smog, we have pollution, we have hazy skies because we're a car city, because everyone's driving around in their cars. But this pollution and this smog is, is bad, but at the same time, it gives the city a really special glow. And people talk about this kind of golden light of Los Angeles. And so you've got all these little particles and elements of smog in the sky, but when the sun hits them, it really makes it kind of this golden haze. And so that's something that's really unique. The light in Los Angeles is really special. And, you know, when you sit back and you enjoy it and you say, wow, this is something really beautiful, but at the same time, every breath you take is uh, not such a healthy breath. So that's something that is, is interesting about our city. I don't know, I wanna say maybe because whenever someone from out of the country comes out, they most likely wanna to go to LA. It's where like all the parties happen. A lot of stuff goes down over there. A lot of stuff is from LA. Um, it's a pretty fun city if you're in the right area. Well, it all makes sense for it to be here. This was the last place on the map for Manifest Destiny. Uh -huh. When uh, when America was expanding and uh, expanding its round empire, you know, wanted to get coast to coast, this was the last stop. And, uh, you know, it's just, it was ripe for the picking. You have this beautiful beach, you have these beautiful landscapes, and nobody using it. So they started building the movie industry here. me not to come to LA, to, to stay in New York, or to move to a southern a town in the south. And when you're from the East Coast, it, it, a lot of people get, give LA a bad reputation of you know, fast cars and fast people and fast, nothing's real. And I found quite the opposite. I, I feel very at home here. And I have friends in different pockets of LA. I feel like LA is a, a, a city of many towns. In Beverly Hills is my bank. In Santa Monica, I live. In Hollywood, I have friends. In Westwood, I see the movies. And if you don't find your, your little pocket, then it's hard to, to, to love it, you know? But once you do, it's good. Broadway, like we're on Broadway right <laughs> We're on Broadway right now, so it's where, like in the 1920s, this is where they were doing all of the vaudeville stuff and the Broadway stuff was right on the street, so. And now it's kind of like scary. <laughs> it's a little sketchy, but. Oh, look, I'm gonna tell you what, look, I'm, hey, sir, I'm gonna go that way, come back down the sidewalk, just the light way. Come on now, I know it's worth it, y'all, you know it's worth it. Like downtown, that's that's where the gnarly happens. But they also got really good food out there. So yeah, I like that place. One of the strangest things in Los Angeles, one of the saddest things in Los Angeles is our Skid Row downtown. In a, a wealthy nation, we're in a nation that should care for the homeless more. And we're in a city that's so affluent but if you go down to Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles, it blows your mind that this could exist 
you know, New York City. Is that good? Good? That's good. Get him up. All right. Is that worth it for y'all? That's worth it. Oh, there's three? That's Thank y'all, man. Bless y'all. All right, I'm K Kenny Anderson, the Red Rider. I want you good. Huh? I want you right like this. I'm 50 years old, so I was nine. 41 years, bro. I goes down hills, 30, 35 miles out, with no hands, waving to everybody. I'm good, bro. Believe me. I'm good. Yep. Hey, this bike paid for itself. Believe that. God bless y'all and your dog. All right. Millions of different worlds happening at once. In the 1800s, it was very fancy, like big Victorian homes. And then those same big mansions, you know, the area started to become poorer and poorer, and the rich houses would move further and further away. And those places, instead of being one family in a big home, it became 30 apartments, you know, 40 single small rooms sharing a bathroom. And it just started falling apart and falling apart. And, you know, eventually, they just got rid of it all and put the skyscrapers there. So that only happened in, I think, 80s, most of that started coming up. Um, but I think that, you know, each neighborhood, it's like, could be a really fancy neighborhood, and then it starts to fall into disrepair, and it becomes cheaper, and then, of course, you know, people move in, and it becomes richer again, and just time. Yeah. The lights are the souls of people. My job is this. This is my job. Right now, profession-wise, I'm teaching yoga. I do a lot of really random things. I've had some really random jobs in LA. Like I worked at a really fancy hair salon. I was Denise Richards' babysitter. Like for instance, I, I'm a skateboarder, you know? Yeah. I, I skateboard, I act, I play guitar, all this stuff. I have all these different ways I can go in my life. There's such a, a kind of a freelance culture that happens and a lot of people doing freelance jobs. So like everyone else, I do a bit of that too. So writing and DJing and making music and consulting and stuff, so. That's about it. I used to do graph on the weekends and work. And that's about it. It's very tough to be successful. By being successful, I'm talking about making a good living. That's really what it comes down to. If people want to be successful in L.A., that's what it means, to go to a party, to be invited to the A-list parties, to be invited to the same parties as movie stars and uh, Steven Spielberg and whoever. That's what it means to be successful in L.A. Everybody that's coming to L.A. is coming here for a reason, to make their dream come true. It's a good dream, you know, but at some point, you can only chase a dream for so long before your locate is not working out. That's nothing much to look forward to. You just have to view what is is and sort of make the best of it. And you know what I think? If I go other places, I probably be the same. Absolutely. Come on, yes. I'm very satisfied with my life, yes. it's. Uh... I've, I've been blessed. I don't even know if I can answer that, if I like have an answer for that. I've, I've written some music, created some music that I'm really proud of. I've had some, some roles where I've worked with some really good people that I'm, I'm proud of myself for getting. I've had, I think it's like <laughs> so cheesy, but like the, the, the very negative things that have happened in my life and that I've managed to still remain really positive and excited about life at the end of them, I would be proud of. I guess that's not really like a tangible thing. <laughs> I could die right at the second this tree could fall on me and I'd be happy. 
I wish I had another record. I wish I could make another few records. I wish I could do all these things, but these wishes are really small compared to the dreams I've already been fulfilled, so I'm very happy. Nobody is satisfied with his life. I mean, we, human nature is like that, you know, we, uh, we always want something more. If you're happy with what your life is, I think you're really satisfied. You should be. Every day I wake up and it's a new day and the weather's perfect 98% of the time. And when it's not, it's still better than most of the other places in the world. So uh, I think the, the weather plays a big part in your mood and your happiness. And because of that, uh, there's more things to do here, you know? So maybe I'm dissatisfied that I'm not just a pure commercial writer and can just write for a living. It could have been better, but, you know, I'm happy with, with, uh, with what I have done. Got my skateboard, I'm healthy. My favorite contest is coming up. I got a roof over my head and great family, great sponsors, great friends. I have nothing to complain about. Yes. Have a good life.